Hello everyone, uh, now I'm just going to do uh, an open boxing and a little overview of the K-Bar Snowdy Big Boss Knife. Now, not sure if any of you guys have heard of this knife before, but this is a, I would consider more of a high value knife here. Um, this is in the price range of anywhere I've seen it from $105 to $150 uh, for this knife, but it's a fixed blade and it's a S35 VN blade steel. So. Just gonna open this up here for you. This is the uh, K-Bar packaging here. Okay, so it uh, looks like it has the uh, classic K-Bar style knife blade. Just as a picture on the outside of this box here. Okay, so we're gonna open this up. Okay, so the first thing you'll see when you open the box here is this is the what they call semi-custom sheath for this. Now, just show you the logo there. Let's take a look at this. Um, this is now. This is made by JRE. Um, like I said, semi-custom. At least that's what it's advertised for. It's uh, finished very nicely on the sheath. Although there's no webbing on it, no points of attachment yet. But you do have the uh, the holes in there. Um, so just to show you, so this is the sheath, and this does actually include uh, eight feet of paracord. And this eight feet of paracord here can be used for a lanyard, can be used to lash this up uh, if you want to make a belt attachment or attachment to your pack. So put the sheath along the back there. This is the paracord just to show you. It's a black, purple, and green design here. Um, and that can be used in conjunction with the bead that's also included in here uh, for uh, schmuckatelli, which is uh, how I've heard it pronounced before. But anyway, this is a nice, uh, pretty solid lanyard bead included here with this knife kit. So, see if you can get a good uh, look at that. My receipt here. Now, here we have the additional set of handle scales. These are purple and they've got the same logo on them as the lanyard bead that's included. Um, they refer to these handles as the Dollar Hollis uh, handles here, which is a nice deep purple, almost like a royal purple. Not sure if you can see that uh, color coming through on camera or not, but uh, yeah, pretty deep color. So I'm going to put these aside here. Next thing I'm going to take out is the knife in this plastic sheath here. So this is the Snowdy Big Boss. Uh, there's two knives, well, three knives in this series in this series by uh, Mike Snowdy, but this is the largest of the three. Um, this is the big boss. They also make a boss, and then in addition to that, they make, I believe it's called a snake charmer, and that's a smaller knife, more like a neck knife. The regular boss is just about an inch and a half shorter than this one, and that's a small fixed blade here. But um, yeah, so let's take a look at this. This is actually a pretty high polish here on this blade. Um, very, very smooth to touch, just to show you. Uh, the markings on the blade here. So we have the K-Bar USA stamped on there with the Schmuckatelli logo. Here we have 5102, uh, which is the model number of this particular knife. And then S35VN, which is the blade steel. Now, the blade steel of S35VN was uh, kind of the reason I decided to buy this knife here. Um, this is a pretty good full tang slab of um, of uh, S35 VN steel, which is nice. Now, uh, according to my reading, um, S35 VN is very similar to S30V. Um, differences are this is a little bit easier to sharpen. You know, I, I've read in certain cases that this this edge can roll a little bit easier than S30V, but I'm curious to uh, test that out, and I'm really eager to see how the steel performs. These are some blue Zytel handles that are included, and these are connected just with some Allen keys or hex uh, bits. Now, I'll be taking the handle off in a second because when I was looking at purchasing this knife, I was very curious to see what the metal tang looked like underneath, whether it was milled out or not. Um, I'm going to take this off and actually show you guys uh, because, like I said, it's not something I was able to find when I was looking to purchase this knife. So, just to show you, comes back on here with a pretty thick... Uh, uh, tang allows you to connect a lanyard. It's all very nice. This is smoothly polished as well, and it uh, it's nice and rounded. Uh, I just want to show you the back edge of the blade here quickly. Um, this has got a false wedge on top here, so this is actually a, uh, comes to a more acute point than I was really expecting. Uh, it's a relatively not sharp, but it's 
sharper than some other rounded knives here um, that I've had in my possession. So this is ground down very aggressively on the top. Um, I guess that would make this a good penetration uh, or good at penetrating. Um, now on all the websites they, they say that this knife is best suited as a tactical blade but in all honesty there's, a, there's no jimping on the back spine of the knife here. Um, these handles do come all the way around. Um, again no jimping on the back of the handles here. Um, using this as a tactical blade, I don't know, I think there's better options out there. This is a very slick knife, it's pretty smooth. The uh, reason I bought it is for a kind of a day backpacking or multi-day backpacking trip. Uh, this can be used for some food prep. Um, I'm sure this will baton wood uh, alright. Obviously you don't have a very big span with this uh, blade. This is a four and a half inch blade by the way if I haven't mentioned that yet. Um, so this will do for your light camp tasks. Um, you could stretch it in to do some batoning and um, maybe making some feather sticks, some more aggressive tasks like that. Uh, but uh, this is by no means going to be your only uh, survival blade that you're gonna that you're gonna want to have on you. Um, yeah, so let me just give you a nice close up here. Now, before I take the handle scales off, I just want to show you some other knives I would put in the similar category. So let me get this stuff out of the way. And let's put this one down here. Alright, so other knives in this category. I would consider uh, the Mora knives in this category. Now, just to show you really quick, just a size comparison, this is a Mora Companion HD. Um, blade length very similar the Mike Snowdy uh, K bar big boss is a uh, half an inch longer in blade now see if I can uh, have you guys pick this up on camera the blade thickness is actually it's pretty similar on the K bar it's uh, I would say maybe a millimeter millimeter and a half thicker at the very spine but it does grind down to the uh, false wedge here on the back of the K bar whereas the Mora uh, heavy duty keeps that thick blade steel all the way through. And mind you, this Mora is not a very uh, fancy steel. This is just a uh, um, uh, high carbon steel. Um, so yeah, I would I would consider the Mora Companion uh, heavy duty a similar option uh, as this. Mind you, this is not a full tang knife. This is a three quarter tang knife. Um, personally, I would use it in the same style tasks as I would use this uh, Big Boss in. Uh, at least for me. Now that's something on the I guess a little bit smaller end now looking at something on a little bit larger end here this is the SE6 um, this is a knife that I've put quite a bit of use on um, now let's compare this one as well here so I mean you see the size comparison here it's not much of a size comparison really um, the big boss has quite a small handle especially compared to this nice long handle here um, a nice thick handle lets you get a really good purchase here on this knife. Good grip. It's got a finger choil, uh, so you can position your hand like this. Have lots of grip on there. It even has the top spine jimping on this SE6. Um, I'll be honest, I think this SE6 would make a much better tactical blade than um, this uh, Mike Snowdy Big Boss. Um, so yeah, just to show you the blade length. This is about an inch and a half uh, difference in length as well uh, between these two blades. So if we compare exactly where the edge starts, so I'll hold this right back there, you can see, yeah, it's about an inch and a half. And even on paper, specs wise, uh, this is four and a half, this is six inches. Um, so that was just something I wanted to show you guys there. Okay, so now I'm going to take this knife apart here and show you what uh, the tang is like underneath those handles. Because, uh, again, that is something I'm curious to see and I was unable to find. So I'll be able to show you guys that here in one second. All right, so I've secured the right Allen key here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the handles off here. And just to let you know, this is a five and 64 uh, Allen key. Um, that was a pretty tight seal to break on these screws actually. I wonder if those were Loctited. Let's see just in a second here. Yeah, so no Loctite on there, as you can see, just as it is. All right, so I just took the first handle scale off, and you know what? After I took those screws out there, it took me about uh, three, four minutes to actually get the handles apart. Uh, and now I'm just seeing underneath here. I don't know if you guys will be able to pick this up. There's a, like a red, it almost looks like a syrup, but it's, it's rock hard to the touch. 
uh, all around the treads in there and wow was that a strong uh, strong seal after I took the screws out it was like nothing had happened the handles didn't separate one bit I was trying to pry them with my hands uh, and they were not coming out very easily um, so I took the edge of the allen key and luckily the handle scales were not lined up very well there was a one of them was protruding a little bit higher than the other one so there's a little bit of a lip sticking out I just took the edge of the allen key and I pushed it against that top lip upwards and uh, got that one to come out but I am really amazed at how secure that was in there um, so yeah that's that's what it took to remove the handle scales and that that was way more effort than I was initially expecting uh, to do that anyway just with some light pressure the other side comes off there and uh, there's no red liquid on that side but anyway I was very curious to see if this was milled out at all maybe save some weight something like that but uh, nope no milling out on this handle this is completely full tang um, Again, this knife is not designed for chopping, um, but uh, there are some other knives out there. I'll give one example right here. On a larger handle, this is a Buck Hoodlum here. Now, this is a great knife, as you can see by the blade here. There's been a ton of use on this. Um, it's a little bit dirty right now, but I did put a mirror polish on here, on the edge, uh, after a first couple trips out actually this handle is even loose right now I don't know if you guys can hear that but it is sliding back and forth I'm gonna quickly pause this and open this up show you what the inside of this is like uh, just to compare it here to the snowy big boss okay just to save some time for you guys I just quickly t uh, undid the screws here um, again this is the buck hoodlum okay so so you guys can see right there all right, so undo the screws. This pops out here. These are some really nice micarta handles, actually. So I'm gonna get these out of the way. But uh, you see the tang here on the buck hoodlum, and you see that it's milled out in the middle. And there are actually some other knives that do this as well. A uh, very popular knife is the Artac 2, uh, made by Ontario. That's a super popular outdoors knife, and uh, they do the same kind of thing. Mill out the center of the handle because supposedly this uh, absorbs some of the vibration. Uh, mind you, these larger knives are made a little bit more for chopping, but just to show you, if you were planning on doing any of that with your uh, Mike Snowdy Big Boss, uh, it's not milled out there. Uh, and in addition to that, this doesn't save out or save any weight for you guys uh, having the full tang the handle um, very quickly just gonna check in with some specs here uh, to tell you guys so uh, I already mentioned blade steel is S35 VN uh, same steel actually uh, Chris Reeve uses in his custom knives now uh, S35 VN um, edge holding capabilities will vary from knife maker to knife maker because it depends a lot on the heat treat and the heat treat here uh, for this Mike Snowdy uh, Big Boss uh, it's a little bit ambiguous because depending on where you look, you get different uh, specifications for the hard for the hardness of this blade. Um, now it says even on K Bar's website, uh, it ranges between 58 and 62, which I'll be honest is one of the largest ranges I've seen in uh, in a knife steel, uh, let alone a more uh, quote unquote higher end knife uh, like something like this. Um, this knife is 6.69 ounces, um, which I mean. Is expectable for a full tang fixed blade like this. Um, has the semi custom uh, JRE sheath. I'm just going to show you one more time here, which is this one right here. Uh, it's a relatively slim profile. Um, okay, uh, moving on here. Uh, again, it says the best use for this knife is a tactical knife and I'll be honest I I don't know that I would employ this knife in that kind of role uh, heaven forbid it had to be um, this is in my opinion more of a day hiking uh, knife this would be good for some food prep uh, some light batoning if you had to um, thin out some kindling uh, that would be more suitable for this blade uh, it's a draw point blade here with the false wedge on top uh, it's sharpened at 20 degrees, but upon further inspection of the edge, uh, I'm going to be reprofiling this a little bit on my wicked edge because uh, I'm not sure if this is visible, but it looks like there's uh, quite a bit of a larger bevel here uh, on this side of the knife versus when you turn it around, it gets very, very thin uh, over here. So this this is maybe not sharpened correctly initially, uh, but that's nothing that my wicked edge won't be able to fix up on this blade. 
Now, all in all, uh, just an overview, keep in mind this is not a, a review, a review will be coming in the future after I get some hard use on this knife, but um, it looks like looks like a good value knife. Now the handle scales are only Zytel, it doesn't compare much to this nice high-end uh, micarta scales that you'll see on some of these other outdoors knives, uh, fixed blades like this, uh, but it is a, a big chunk of S35VN blade steel. Uh, it's a nice form factor here, a four and a half inch blade is quite capable, uh, again depending on what you're doing for it, you want to use the right tool for the job. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, saw something in here that you haven't seen before, of my overview of the Mike Snowdy Big Boss. Uh, thank you guys for watching, if you want to see more knife reviews and uh, overviews, unboxings, so be sure to subscribe uh, and you'll see some more in the future. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.